Hello, my name is Veronica Alvarez. I'm the Director of School and Teacher Programs at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. And I'm Lisa Marin. I'm, from the, I'm a consultant with the uh, Los Angeles County Office of Education and a TEAL project administrator. And we're gonna tell you our story today about TEAL. So this was a three-year partnership um, where we did a, a blended learning, a trainer of trainer models, um, where we really wanted to provide equity and access to a wide variety, uh, um, obviously to the students, and hopefully by the end of the three-year project, work with 70 school districts. And obviously it takes a community of partners to make this happen. So these are some of the key, the principal players in this project, it's a three-year project, uh, under by a three-year grant from the Productivity Investment Fund through the Quality and Productivity Commission and the Los Angeles County Arts Commission. Arts for All, of course, is part of that and it's a uh, strategic uh, partner with us in this whole development. The, uh, also, we were funded by the National Endowment for the Arts for this year. <laughs> And we have just been thrilled with, with all of the support we've gotten. As any important relationship, partnerships are key. And what we felt was great about this partnership is that each brought different strengths. So, you know, the LA County of Arts brought the funding. So that was very important. Their VAPA expertise and so forth. The Los Angeles County Office of Education brought logistics, tech support, um, curriculum expertise and so forth. So they have a whole team that could provide that support. And then LACMA, we were able to obviously do our venue, provide teachers an opportunity to leave their classrooms and go to a museum um, and to see objects. And what I always tell teachers um, as a historian, you're looking at primary sources. So making that link with the objects of looking at primary sources in our collections is a great opportunity. And being a classroom teacher, I think the opportunity to leave the classroom is always a great thing. So we provided the venue obviously, collection and the instructional and content expertise. So I think this partnership obviously came together in this shared vision of arts integration and education. It is a shared vision. This is, we're in about two thirds so far into, our, into this project. Uh, and we do share a very passionate vision for arts integration in education throughout LA County. As I mentioned, coming to LACMA, we have an encyclopedic collection that is really able to provide students with objects uh, from different histories and different cultures. And as somebody said yesterday about having students make those connections was very important. And so our encyclopedic collection allowed for that. And LACMA had always, um, for over 30 years, has done a lot of training with teachers on how they could use strategy, strategies and techniques. And I see Rachel who led a lot of that for a good chunk of that time. So we had always provided a lot of um, expertise and to teachers and working with teachers. But as we said, we don't have the resources for the technology. And I think that that's where the partnership with LACO was really helpful. The technology enabled us to do a lot of things. But one thing that we really want to, to emphasize is that the it was really inspiring to see the teachers at a museum like LACMA with this incredible collection and in the galleries and learning from Veronica. For some of them, it was their first experience in a major museum and that was just exhilarating to see how they responded to that and what, what a marvelous experience it was for them. But we also realized that no matter how great the PD is, the issue of getting it at scale, which is one thing Denise Grande mentioned yesterday, how do you scale it up? That was one of our, our key concerns because we were tasked with this goal, not just in one area or one district or any certain spot, but throughout Los Angeles County. And that was very, very important for us to recognize and to focus on in the development of this. So the question we asked, uh, today, and as we look at our project, is how well are we accomplishing this and where are we going from here? So you can see our goal, and we knew we needed engagement, we needed equitable access, which is certainly a theme that we've heard throughout these two days. The idea that in Scaling, our idea was that in scaling, in increasing the numbers of people who had access to our 
professional development model, we were able to provide more equitable access and we'll talk about exactly how in a little bit. We also were concerned with sustainability because we know that sometimes, or a lot of times, after the PD is gone, no matter how fabulous it was, there is little to go on afterwards. There's little follow-up if teachers don't have support and, and time and, uh, and just the culture that they are able to implement what they learned at their professional development. Our goal was to take this throughout Los Angeles County using technology-enhanced learning. So today we call that blended learning, where you have face-to-face -face instruction and you have online instruction. It allowed the technology, which is one thing that Dr. Catterall mentioned, technology does provide for communication, instruction online, and also, there is application of the arts through technology, using technology, which is one thing we did have the teachers do in our professional development. So when we say teachers throughout LA County, we mean both pre-service and in-service. Recognizing that there is a, not a need or a requirement, a mandate for K-6 teachers to have arts education in their, in their credential program, or let alone arts integration, we worked with Cal State LA to, this was a little, <laughs> to ensure that through TEAL, the Technology Enhanced Arts Learning Program project, through that we would educate pre-service teachers and their faculty, who really got into this too, and give them a common language to speak once they got out into the districts. Once they're hired into the districts, the districts that were using TEAL, which we have quite a few, would be able to talk the same language and understand what arts integration was all about. First of all, why it's so important, and then why, what, what it's all about. Our idea of blended, blending the learning we learned really quickly that it needed to be very intentional. Uh, blended learning is very popular these days, the idea that you have, a, you have instruction in face-to-face -face and then you also have the, the online component, which is great. But it was very, very important to be very intentional about scaffolding our components so that the initial fabulous in-person professional development for our coaches, what we called our TEAL coaches coming from all over the, the county, was scaffolded and supplemented and supported with each component, whether it was face-to-face -face or online. So our case study Year one, which was 14-15, we did a pilot, which was really, really a wonderful opportunity to explore and find out what was really going to work for both of these populations. The students used the modules, which there are, there, at that time there were two online modules, and I'm going to get into what all the components are, but they did use the modules to design lessons and activities. School districts, on the other hand, we had three districts, three good-sized districts, who participated in our three-day professional development. The actual requirements were pretty modest in terms of what they were expected to do, what they were required to do. They were asked to select two TOSAs, teachers on special assignment, or classroom teachers, or arts, dedicated arts teachers, to come to the professional development and become coached into arts integration practices to experience the uh, strategies and approaches that Veronica would teach them. And then, and quite a few other, we had other specialists as well, but return back to their district and work with five teachers to help them and guide them in arts integration in their classrooms. Because the key component was always to get this to the students. Right. So even though there was a huge time crutch for various factors, um, the coaches had to really coach and hustle to get those teachers to implement a lesson by June. And we were talking about April or May. So those of you that work with teachers, you know that that was a huge incentive, but they came through. And another key component of these pilot districts was to really provide us feedback on how we could define 
uh, refine both the in-person and the modules. So they gave key critical feedback as to how we would revise the modules when we did the rollout this past year to 60 school districts. So these three were really key. And, Yes, um, and, and, and with, the, with the districts, it was a trainer of trainer model. That was what we basically were using. But we were adding some elements to that to support it so that the, once those teal coaches got back, they still had, they had a lot of support online and with our regional consultants who were, we had three regional consultants who recruited and worked with the districts and communicated largely online uh, or on the phone or through email, but also made visits to the actual districts and classrooms to guide and support uh, during this time. Uh, Cal State LA, the results were that the faculty, we had 448 students enrolled in using the, the first two modules. We had developed two modules at that point. Uh, the Introduction to Arts Integration and the Visual Arts Integration module. And so we got great participation there. We also were stunned at what the three districts did. Well, they only were needed to have five teachers, two, two coaches and five teachers each, guide them through that and then allow us to do basically a case study with those people so that we could shape what we were doing during the pilot. Hassan the Heights implemented Teal throughout their second grade. So they went far beyond the, the 10 teachers that we were expecting. Uh, Montebello, let me back up. Hassan the Heights, La Puente, throughout the district, throughout K6. So they jumped in, it was amazing. They held PDs. Uh, with very large numbers of teachers. We, we didn't capture all the numbers, but our, our visits to the districts, we saw that they were really taking it very seriously and going throughout the district. Montebello did implement throughout one grade level, and Pomona selected certain grade levels and certain teachers that they wanted to have work with Teal and uh, our regional consultants, and also access to Veronica, who supported them with questions uh, online and just a variety of ways. Do you want to talk about how you supported the pilot? Yeah, and then we'll, we'll show other examples of how sure. other schools um, implemented. But yeah, I was basically available for content, lesson plans, lesson ideas. Like they would say, I'm working on this lesson in social sciences. Are, are there artworks or lessons that you could help guide us with? But again, we'll show you a few examples we'll of pictures of, of how each, a lot of other districts implemented the lessons. The yeah. pieces that were developed during the pilot then, with all this, we got a lot of feedback, we got a lot of surveys, we, we interviewed, we did a lot of things to shape the pilot and what components we wanted to use. The components we decided were eight online modules. We developed the first two during the pilot year and subsequent after we had a lot of feedback on those. And as I said, the first one was an introduction to arts integration, the why, why it's valuable, the what is it, uh, some of the uh, pedagogy and background knowledge and, and Vygotsky and uh, Dewey and uh, Howard Gardner. That kind of background in terms of what where we were coming from, really, and what is creativity. And a lot of this material was very, very helpful, especially at the pre-service level, where teachers were learning about these things in their other subject areas as well, and they could tie that together in their whatever course they were using, they, their faculty were using it. We had participants from counseling, the counseling department from the Charter School of Education, and from, even from kinesthesiology, where they were really focusing on the movement ideas in, in terms of arts integration. So we were we planned for eight modules, and we still are planning for eight modules. We have the two that we used in the pilot. We used the Kennedy Center definition that was spoke about yesterday. We loved the fact that it talked about evolving objectives in both. This is the basic teal model that was developed. On the left are all the in-person aspects, and on the right are the online, the website and online modules, 24-7 access to those, online content. We followed with webinars that are in person, or excuse me, live and archived. We had in-person support from regional consultant staff, 
and of course the three-day PD, which we had five sessions of three-day PD. So all the components, person in-person, site-based, coaching, professional learning community through Edmodo, webinar, online modules, and then ultimately the classroom application. We were very strategic in um, the in-person stuff because we wanted the in-person to be an introduction and then really have them take ownership of the content by having them go through the online modules themselves at their own pace. And we did modeling as um, um, it was mentioned earlier, modeling is important. And I just had a conversation with Dr. George McKenna. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's so impressive that Denzel Washington played him in the movie about his life. And he said... <laughs> He said that the one key thing he would love to do with education is have other teachers observe great teachers. He's like, that is how one way we could solve the education crisis is to really look at exemplary teaching. So we tried to model that. And so we did fundamental things that we feel, you know, um, as Denise talked about yesterday, the arts are an important subject matter. If we're saying that they're a core one, we have to say that there's fundamental skills that we need to teach teachers about the arts. So we did the elements of art. We did webinars. And these were important because these were based on what the teacher said that they still wanted more of. So we didn't get enough during the online or the in-person. What do you want more of? So exam one example was like STEAM to STEM, children's literature, and working with English learners. And another very key component, again, those of you that work with teachers, it's really hard to create online communities. Um, and so the first year, Edmodo wasn't used as much as we had hoped, but by the second year, it really was more robust. Teachers were posting lessons that they implemented, videos of students acting out the solar system, like really great things, and teachers providing feedback and evidence of all, all the things that they did at their school sites after they had had their TO coaching. So we did um, hands-on art making with teaching artists, making common core connections that we have talked about with English language arts, being very strategic about that, um, modeling visual thinking strategies, having students cite support um, evidence to support their answers. We did a whole lesson on science and art um, to address next generation science standards. We did a visual and math connections. We did a math um, art making lesson, and then we kind of did the online version using an iPad so that people could see both. And then we addressed the college and career readiness standards by having these great videos of people that work at JPL, so scientists and engineers, and then having them talk about how the arts have impacted their practice. And so kids could really see like the arts really can address your career. Great results. Everybody love yeah. it? <laughs> uh, this is this is a map to show you the districts that uh, the, the teal color is are, are the districts that uh, participated and that will participate again next year for the performing arts. We have three modules uh, that will roll out in the fall for performing arts. These are some of the charter networks and private schools. We wanted a cross section of the schools in LA County, they're not all public school districts, uh, from the charter networks and private schools, so we had a great uh, time with a diverse group of educators. Uh, we have we recruited 58 LEAs, 58 schools, districts, and charters. 43 of them went back to their sites and performed uh, PD with 2,300 participants. Okay. We had 288 people in our PLC, online PLC that Veronica was talking about. Webinar, we had 330 participants in the four webinars that actually Veronica led on visual arts integration and literacy support for English learners. Um, on our online modules one and two, we had over 4,000 people enrolled. This is what happened at the Cal State, 567 pre-service teachers on the courses. There were 12 courses with 11 faculty using the courses. And these are examples, as we mentioned, like we didn't have an agenda of how the coaches were going to implement in their classroom. So it ranged from a, a wide variety. The Lancaster district went to their local museum. They thought the venue aspect was so important they wanted to replicate it at their local museum. 
and as did Pomona College of the Arts, or they went to Pomona College. And then this was Covina Valley, and the thing that I wanted to mention about here, sometimes they were, the TO coaches are trainer-trainer models, but sometimes they would actually ask me to come in because they're like, I've been on the PD agenda for like the last three times, but they always say they've run out of time. If you come, the superintendent won't, you know, bump you out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what happened here. And this was implemented district-wide, and because I was coming, somebody from LACMA, we had got 204 teachers that came to this PD. The superintendent came, the curriculum instruction specialist came, and so they wanted a, st a STEAM lesson, and so we did that. And look at how fun they had. Yeah. <laughs> the critical aspect of administrative support, which we actually added in as we learned this during the pilot. We recognized we had to have administrators buy-in in order to get the support for the teachers. Uh, in the classroom, uh, quick story, uh, my project director and I were doing Golden Bell visits to the school, and lo and behold, one of the classrooms was using See Wonder Think, Veronica, who had participated in Teal, was using See Wonder Think to look at and provide site evidence for the Underground Railroad using a variety of uh, paintings that the teacher had provided, and that was a pretty cool experience. And we were okay, lessons learned. Blending must include intentionally scaffolded components with multimedia and classroom-ready resources. So blended learning is great, but there's got to be some real intention behind it. Um, and then, like, and I think when you do the blended learning is key. We decided to do it up front, and I think that really helped for the teachers to see themselves face to face, so that they could participate in the end moto. You know, once they knew each other and so forth. And so, I think doing the blended learning up front was key. Yeah. Well, those PD support was really important via the uh, online systems. It's very effective too, as long as it is monitored and maintained until it becomes part of the culture. It's, you know, it's not there yet. So it has to be monitored and maintained and supported. Teachers need reassurance. Oh, yes, that they need not be experts. And I heard this yesterday a bunch of times. They come in, I can't draw, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And that was the awesome thing about our teaching artists who taught them how to take a 2D representation and turn it into a 3D form. And then that idea was, was spread throughout the three-day PD with a math lesson and a science lesson. And just that was a really powerful thing, along with the academic language that Veronica taught them. They became kind of, they kind of knew something about art. And they felt really, you could see, they felt really more confident and, and empowered. Able, empowered. Got to have a personal exchange. Everything really hinged on having that relationship. Want to maximize in person learning, and, and like Veronica was talking about, show master teaching best practices. And we certainly learned that there was not going to be any one way to implement. We did work with them to design their implementation plans, uh, but boy, they took it all over the place, depending on what kind of support they could get back in the district and what their needs were. Uh, maybe they wanted it in their LCAP. Maybe they wanted it to address a uh, local initiative or focus on specific populations. So yesterday, I think it was Danielle's call to arms, and she said, all hands on deck. And I think we really, that's really, really a, an important aspect of this and this arts integration movement. Um, we're all crusaders, and we do need each other to really make this successful, which I think we can. Thank you so much. Thank you.